Hey guys, how cool is this? It's called the Defender 90, um, and that's because the old models used to have a 90 inch wheelbase. Um, this one doesn't actually have 90 inches in between there anymore, it's a bit different. Um, and then the bigger, the, there's a four door or the five door version is called the 110. Um, there's also speak of a 130 uh, long wheelbase version coming along as well. This is definitely the coolest of the lot though, I think anyway. Land Rover is probably not going to like me saying this, but it kind of reminds me of the new Suzuki Jimny in that it's, you know, it's very cool and interesting, um, almost cartoonish, um, but also it, it's like a concept car, but you can actually buy this. It's amazing that you can actually buy this. For the traditional Defender fans, you know, you, they're not going to like certain things. Um, it's got independent suspension all around. Um, it looks, you know, it's, it's not as rugged looking, it's not as boxy looking. Um, but that's all to meet, you know, efficiency, um, pedestrian safety and things like that. I think Land Rover has done an awesome job. Like, I love the design. It's a, it's a great interpretation, a modern interpretation of the classic Land Rover. Like check out this sort of checker plate stuff on the bonnet there. Like I know it's a little bit gimmicky and so on. And even this one's got the uh, the sticker pack there with the 90 uh, decal on it. This is not a typical boring SUV. Even the detail in the in the headlights there. So it's it's open. Like you'd think that they'd put a, a bit of you know a covering over that just to make it more aerodynamic, but they haven't, which is awesome. I think it's really cool. You might even be able to get it as an option. I don't know, but um, I just think that every detail about this car. It's just really inspiring. And then of course, awesome approach angle at the front and an awesome uh, departure angle at the back. Being a short wheelbase means it does have a good breakover angle as well. So that means you can clamber over things and it's unlikely to, uh, to scrub the belly. Spare tire on the back where it should be for a hardcore four wheel drive. Uh, that way, if you get a flat tire when you're in the, in the sticky stuff, you don't have to climb under the car to, to retrieve the spare tire. You just pull it straight off the back. And then in the back, not sure about this big tailgate. It is quite heavy. Nice little storage pocket in the back. And then a little bit of boot space. So it's this is the short wheelbase version, obviously. So you're not going to be getting a, a massive boot there. But um, if you really need it, the 110 version has a massive boot. Like it comes all the way out to here. Um, and it's got this, again, the sort of checker plate style rubbery plastic uh, surface on the back there. Something that is a little bit disappointing is the when you pop down the rear seats, you've got, no, it's just stopping on the, on the front seat there, but it doesn't fold down flat because of this, this panel. I mean, that probably stops things from, from sliding forwards, but um, you've got like a step. And it's not completely flat either, it sort of ramps up. But I mean, you can squash it down a little bit. Obviously, if you need more boot space, then you go for the 110. Um, but I think that's enough for a, uh, for a weekend away with a you know, small family, maybe one child or, or a couple, because um, you can use the other seats for, for storage as well. As much as I love the exterior, um, I think the interior is perfectly matched as well. Um, like this shelf that goes all the way along and you can put things behind the, the screen there and there's another little spot there and another, it continues all the way over the other side. I should point out that this is the base model. Uh, Land Rover Australia offered me the P250 or the P300, I think it was. Um, but I thought, no, we'll test the, uh, the absolute base model just to see what you get. This does come with a few options, such as that uh, the decal on the bonnet, it's got black wheels and the black pack with the black mirrors and everything. I'll flash up the, uh, the exact specs of this car now so you can see the sort of pricing and the, op the pricing of the options as well. Just keep in mind, some of those prices might change. Uh, that's just at the time of, of doing this video. With the base model though, you don't get a center console. So it's just this big flat uh, area. Um, I think that is a bit of, you know, wasted space, um, but it does add to that sort of cartoonish uh, feel to it because, I don't know, you don't get that any these days. You know, there's always all this clunky stuff around you that makes you feel, you know, it can make you feel claustrophobic, whereas that is just very open and, and clean. But if you want to, you can get a full console. You've got a couple of different charging options here, 12-volt socket, USB, USB-C, um, and yeah, the nice big touchscreen. Semi-digital dash uh, driver's cluster. We'll, we'll jump in the driver's seat in a sec and uh, I'll, I'll show you that. Um, but yeah, overall, I love these fabric seats. Sometimes you get a bit sick of leather because it just doesn't breathe. It's sort of hot when it's hot and it's cold when it's cold. Um, whereas this is just a bit breathable um, and it feels quite durable as well. Um, the only thing I would complain about the seats, they don't have very much support. Um, the side is okay and the fabric actually helps to sort of grip you in 
um, but the, f the the bottom part is very flat and it's actually tilted back you can raise it up a bit but then the seat the whole seat comes up too so it, it'd be good if that front section could just drop down a bit because um, I'm finding yeah it's just just a little bit sort of I'm not gonna say uncomfortable but I've just noticed that um, whereas I wouldn't usually notice that uh, after driving a car for the usual sort of week test drive getting into the back it's pretty easy um, probably the, the main hurdle is just climbing up um, although that's not really a complaint because it's an off-road car Sometimes it comes all the way back. It just depends if you leave the seat tilted forward and sort of grab it at the bottom, then it will come back to its its, its normal spot or the, the spot that it was in before you, you tilted it forward. You got grab handles for off-roading, um, even a, a coat hanger hook up the top there, and then the traditional uh, Alpine skylights uh, on, on the top corners there. I think the space is fine. I'm not. I don't feel claustrophobic at all. Um, it's probably helped by the fact that it doesn't have a, uh, a center console, because um, it just makes it feel a bit more open. Plenty of legroom for me. Um, I'm 170 centimeters, um, which is probably pretty short, I guess. Um, but you know, I've still got plenty of headroom there, and that seat is at a decent sort of level back. Um, so there's no. I don't think you'd be running out of legroom, even if you're a bit taller. So it does have three seats in the back as well. I've had a, a forward facing baby seat in here. Um, everything fits fine. Just a matter of threading it through the, the gap when you've got that seat forward. But um, yeah, my three year old, his head's nowhere near the top. The seat, you know, sort of comes up to there and it's excellent visibility. You've got this huge side window. Um, so they're not gonna feel, feel well, less likely to get uh, the car sick or something like that. There is no center armrest that flips down, um, but just while I'm back here actually, you pop that down it does help you see through the back the spare tire does sort of restrict your view out the back a little bit um, but having that down helps this example does feature the digital rear view mirror as well um, I'll show you that when we get driving being the base model this does feature a, uh, a sort of plastic steering wheel or it's not leather you can dig your fingernail into it it is soft it's not rock hard i actually like it it's it's very utilitarian um you know and if you're out in the bush and you've got dirty hands it doesn't matter because you can just clean it with any sort of cleaning product and you don't have to worry about it ruining the leather the only thing i would say is you can just feel a sort of seam line around the edge there um, every production version might be slightly different but i can just feel it where they've obviously um you know seamed it together or clamped it together it's got jaguar land rover's latest pv pro touchscreen system um it's it's much better than the previous system mainly for me anyway uh the the loading times um so the previous jaguar systems or land rover systems sorry um you, you click something and it just takes for ages to load whereas now you click something and it will um go straight into it Plenty of apps as well. Um, I'll show you some of these off-roading apps when we will go for a bit of a, a off-road trek. Um, complete surround view camera system. You can actually pick which angle you want to look at um, and it'll, it'll show you where the wheels are on the road, um, which is awesome for off-roading. So sometimes, you know, you should have a spot out there to, to guide you on really rough or difficult sections of, of terrain. But, um, you know, if you're by yourself, and you need to see, oh, am I going to clear that rut or that rock? You can just use this camera system and go through. I really like this, this basic layout for the climate control and some of the, the car functions. Uh, it's just very easy to jump to things rather than have to dive into a, a screen, um, such as the auto stop start. You just turn that off right there. Air conditioning button, nice and, nice and clear and easy to see. Recirculation as well. Um, yeah, it's all, it's all very practical, um, but still quite modern. This example does feature this semi-digital instrument cluster. Um, so you've got normal gauges on the outside and it sort of overlaps to the, uh, to the center gauge. You can go through and change the different display options. Um, so you can put the, the map there. You just go back up to the top, it is a bit fiddly. Um, but yeah, so you can have all different things for the, uh, for the middle section. I like having the, the trip view. So I can keep an eye on fuel economy and so on. You gotta go back up to the top. So this is chewing 8.9 over a distance of about 550 Ks so far. 
Um, that's been a bit of a mixture. I've done the performance testing, um, but I've driven on the highway a bit. Um, so it's not too bad for a, this is a big car. It's about 2.3 tons. Um, so it's, it's not too bad considering that. That's a great segue into the engine. So we'll go for a drive and I'll uh, show you how it goes. Oh, before we go, I'll show you this digital rear view mirror. So that's pretty cool. It's got a camera above the tailgate on the outside of the car. Um, so that way, if you're using the back seat as a uh, sort of boot area and you've got it stocked up with luggage, you don't have to worry. You can see straight past it. I do find it a bit disorienting when you're driving because, I don't know, my eyes, when I look up into the mirror, I feel like they get used to seeing deeply into the mirror, like as in the distance, whereas that's a screen. I don't know, it's, it's really weird to explain, but um, yeah, I just prefer it without it. Being the short wheelbase version, um, it's actually interesting because you look in the side mirrors and because it's so short, the car, you can see pretty much straight behind you. So it's actually got a good clear view uh, behind you just with the side mirrors. Okay, so let's hit the road. So this is a bit of a winding road down here. Uh, it's not the best surface. Um, but, you know, give us a bit of an idea of how it handles. Being the base model, this does come with coil springs. Um, so most of the upper models feature adjustable air suspension, and you can actually raise the, the, the ride height up and down, um, whereas this has got just the coil springs. Both of them have their benefits. Air suspension is obviously very comfortable, like you're riding on a cloud. In saying that, these coil springs, it's also got an excellent ride as well. Um, I'm not a hardcore off-road enthusiast, but I think coil springs are a bit more heavy duty um, and I, they might provide a bit more wheel articulation. I'll have to double check that and I'll flash up any details there. It does handle quite well. Uh, being a short wheelbase, you do get that sort of pokey feeling. You only need to turn a little bit and it starts turning already. Um, again, it kind of reminds me of the Suzuki Jimny in that way, um, but this is much more refined. Um, it's not as sort of, I don't know, flimsy feeling. It's still very solid and stable. There is a bit of body roll, as you probably expect for a uh, sort of serious off-road car, um, but it sort of gets to a point and then it just stops and just holds on. This car does have a couple of rattles. This, again, this is a bad road, a poor surface. But I have noticed there's a rattle on the door here and when you're playing music um, and the speakers actually, I've got the bass turned down or it's at the normal level, the default level. Um, there's still sort of rattling of the door and then there's a bit of a rattle. You might be able to hear it over the back of the, uh, the rear seat. Overall though, very refined, very comfortable mostly quiet the engine is awesome it's really creamy smooth engine inline six so all diesel engines in the uh, the new defender range are inline six which is great i always feel like an inline six is a perfect balance for a off uh, suv or an off-roader because they provide excellent torque excellent low down torque as well um, but enough power to get you up to speed um, and then cruise on the highway but then also they're quite fuel efficient as well. So you get a sort of best of both worlds. Going with the D200, you don't have to worry about there being a lack of power. Um, it's the torque that really matters. So 500 Newton meters and available from down low in the revs too. That, that's what you need, um, especially for a big car like this. I guess the top end is where it starts to run out of puff a little bit. It's not, it's not bad. You can still overtake on the freeway and so on, even going up hills. Uh, it's just, yeah, when you, when you start to accelerate from sort of 80 kilometers an hour and beyond, it just runs out of puff a little bit up in the top end. Um, but certainly not enough to, you know, disappoint you or anything like that. It's quite, it's quite quick. I think we did 0 to 100 in about 9 seconds, uh, a bit quicker than what Land Rover actually quotes. Um, so that, that's good as well. But overall, very refined, smooth, and uh, a quiet drive experience, which is quite a contrast from the, the classic Defender models. This thing's got great visibility, so you can just see straight over the top, the, uh, the window sills aren't as low as the original Defenders. I, I think they're like way down here somewhere um, from memory, but um, you still get, yeah, excellent visibility. You can almost see over the top of the mirror, 
um, I can actually raise the seat up even higher if I want to and of course my head's nowhere near the, the tall ceiling this example is fitted with the full fabric uh, peel back sunroof um, which is almost like a convertible I guess um, just really opens up the cabin it goes right back to you just got to hold the button a bit more to get it to go right back We'll head off road now and see how it handles uh, some tricky conditions. Okay, here we are. It probably doesn't look that steep, but it is quite steep. Might get the cameras going. We can see where I'm going. out for all those sticks okay so at the moment I've just got it in normal mode I might put it onto the gravel grass and snow activate load traction launch no that's it's not needed So again, that probably doesn't look steep, but just think about this. I've got the windscreen there and it's, you know, the sky is way up the top there. So it's actually, we'll go back to the, the, the uh, angle. So it's four degrees now, get onto the slope. There we go, so that's at 19 degrees. Be interesting if this was wet actually <laughs> but um yeah this is having no problems at all even going over these mounds it's not scraping out as you can hear it's just um smoothly going straight up over the top here it is a bit of a, a sharp crest and yep no scrubbing so i've been up there with a land cruiser before and it does scrub out but uh not this because of the short wheelbase Okay, this time we'll go back down and we'll activate the hill descent control. That's active. no brakes and it's doing it all itself I don't know if it's gonna catch the brakes again yep so that's no brakes all doing it by itself slow down because I've got to make a turn as well as go down the sleep, steep section it's 22 degrees people have left, left a bit of a mess here easy as you can see the new Land Rover Defender 90 uh, does exceptionally well off-road um, it'll be great to 
test it out in some, uh, explore some different terrain types and things once these uh, restrictions ease. This is, and I know it's a bit childish to say, and a bit unprofessional, but it, it's my, one of my favorite cars of all time. If I had a dream car garage, uh, this one of these would definitely be in it. Do you need to go for the D250 or even one of the petrol engines? I really don't think you do. This D200 is perfectly adequate for this style of car. Uh, as I said before, the, the torque is the main thing. So going up steep hills like this, you can be resting on your on the throttle, apply more, and it just picks up and goes straight away. There's no hesitation or anything like that. It's just the top end where it starts to run out a bit of puff. That's, that's all. You can always go up to the five litre supercharged V8 as well if you really want power. Um, personally, I'd probably get the D250 um, just a little bit more power only because I enjoy acceleration and speed and all that sort of thing um, so I'd probably go for that but there's no you know back in the days the entry-level model of a premium car was pretty slow you know pretty pretty disappointing um, that's not the case here this is definitely more than adequate uh, for this style of car again it's a way more refined car than the predecessor um, sure you're gonna lose some of that heavy-duty capability and ruggedness um, but yeah this is just overall a more rounded car um, it can do more things you can use this for the family um, your grandma could probably drive it with no problem um, whereas you know the uh, the old the old model was a bit sort of agricultural I suppose you you'd des describe it we'll be putting together a full review on the website soon and we'll include our 0 to 100 video of course until then thanks for watching